you can see from this rope, it looks more like a snake than anything else, really doesn't have any kind of a, an indication of what the rope should look like. So we'll turn this over now and we'll draw just a partial section of that rope. What I'd like you to do when you're looking at the rope is use your pencil to decide what the angle of the actual coil is because as it makes a curve it will get tighter at the one end on the one side and a bit wider at the other. And how you do that is you take a backwards S like that. So you and you want you don't want to have everything in a straight line here. You want to have it come out a bit and come back in. So you come out a bit and you come back in. Now as we get up here, it's going to stretch more on this side and be tighter in here because there's a curve. Now that is basically the stroke you make. Then th there's going to be more indentations and whatnot in there. You need your, your stump then to t take some of the graphite. And if the light is coming from this way, there'll be shadow on this side. You can see you can use those two those two light lines that you started with for your rope, but you end up with a much nicer looking rope. I do have another drawing here. Now there are other kinds of ropes that you can get. There's another one that one of the ladies brought in, and it it was a much finer rope, and it was like a series of V's coming through. So it was here and here to this way and then this way one, two, one, two, one, two. There's also braided ropes But you can see how this is another shaded rope that you have. All it really takes is to really stop and look at what the rope is doing. If your rope has an angle like this, you see how it's angled here, but as you start to turn, this angle changes. So it would not be the same angle all the way across unless you had your rope lined up perfectly straight and most times ropes are curved. So that's my little tip on drawing rope. If you want to be more detailed, you can put in some of these little lines here. But remember, they all go with that reverse letter S. I'm going to show you now another way of drawing a rope. This is with using your stylus. When you use your stylus, you always should put something solid underneath, like a piece of mat board or a cereal box or anything like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just do the same outline, basically, that we did before. But instead of using the, the pencil to do my S's, my reverse S's, 
I'm going to use a stylus and I'd like to figure out which one I think would be the best one for this because you notice on here these all have a different size ball on the end so for really fine detail work you'd small use the smallest one I think this one is too big so I'm going to go down to this size and now I will do the same thing with the stylus that I did with the pencil and I'm going to push really hard and do the reverse S's. And I don't know if you can see the grooves in my paper. Oh, I think you can there. So you can see the grooves in the paper from the stylus. Now there's two ways of filling it in. You can either pick up graphite on the back page in your sketchbook. Oh, well, this is the wrong sketchbook. But I usually have the back page I have extra graphite on. And you can go across with your, with your stump. picking up graphite or you can use the flat edge of a 9B or a 6B pencil. See how I've got my edge here to be quite flat? You don't want to go point wise into the groove. You want to go across. So you can see here, this is just totally with the stump, this is totally with the pencil, or you can take your stump, go back, and go on either side of this, the uh, stylus groove, and you can see that you will get a totally different feel for the finished product. Now I'll show you the same thing using watercolor. This is the rope when I'm going to use watercolor and what I do is I draw a very light line where the rope's going to be and I put in all my grooves as I did with stylus and the pencil and then I'm going to erase the pencil. Up here I've done wider grooves, down here I've done narrower just so you can see the different effects. I am not using watercolor paper, so it will not read as well as if you're using watercolor paper, but you will get to see what the outcome is anyway. Now I'm actually using acrylic here. It's, um, it's not a um, heavy acrylic, it's a light acrylic, but it does the same thing as watercolor does. Now what will happen when I do this is the paint will settle in the grooves I hope it works on this paper when you use watercolor paper wherever you have one of these grooves and I can't even find my watercolor paper this morning And it depends how strong you've put the grooves in as well.
This is a piece of canvas. I've really dug into the canvas with the um, stylus with a very hard piece of paper under, or cardboard underneath. And you can see here now how the paint is actually collecting into the grooves. Trying to get a bit more water on here so it has a chance to go into those swales. Just for a bit of variation, I'm going to put in a heavy body burnt sienna with this just to show you how you can then mix the other colors. And you need to have a lot of water. You see all those grooves in there? That saves a lot of time rather than taking a fine paintbrush and trying to put every line in. Um, I didn't think it would work on canvas, but obviously it has. It will work really well with watercolor on watercolor paper, especially if you get the really good watercolor paper that has a lot of substance to it. If you're doing a rope, I would say do not use the really smooth side. Use the rough side. If I wanted to even make this stronger, I could probably go back in here and accent the grooves. The other thing I'm going to try, and this is a learning process for both of us right now, so I'm just going to put some paint on here first. Maybe a couple colors of paint just to get them so it's not just solid one color. And let's see what happens now. Whether we even need to do it first. Hmm. Well, there you go. We have both learned a lesson together. <laughs> That's how you can use your stylus to get your rope to work properly. Have fun with it. See you next time.